Today, we're gonna to go through how to integrate the N6700C into an automated test sequence. I'm Brian Whitaker, a product marketing engineer here at Keysight. And I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, a test geek here at Keysight as well. So what's first, Brian? Yeah, so we're gonna go through Command Expert. It's a free tool that integrates instrument commands, documentation, syntax checking, and command execution in one interface. Fantastic, so let's get going. Okay. Can you talk me through your setup and what we're going to do here? Sure, absolutely. So I have Command Expert set up here. We have the PC here connected to the N6700 via USB, so we can control it that way. So I see what looks like a fire alarm here, and we have both an SMU and a precision power supply. I assume one of these two is gonna give us some insights into this. Yeah, we'll go ahead and just use a precision uh, power supply for, for this exercise. All right, I'll plug it in and you set up your tests. Okay, sounds good. So now I'm gonna set up a sequence within Command Expert to measure the current drain of the smoke detector. So first, uh, in this panel, you can see my instruments. So I already have an N6700C already set up here. I just need to connect to it. All right, let's turn it on. Okay. So now let's go ahead and create a simple sequence. So now let's hit connect. Now that we're connected, you can see the complete command set for the N6700C. So again, what I wanna do is measure the current drain from this device. So first, what I wanna do is set the vo output voltage uh, to turn it on, which since this uses a CR123A battery is around three volts. We go to source, voltage. I go to level, immediate, amplitude, Right, and here you can see the command information. So it gives you a lot of details. A lot of detail. A lot of details about the, the functionality of the command that goes into great detail on the parameters, right? It'll tell you which commands work with which modules. So it gives you a lot of information here. It makes it really easy to set up the command. So now all I have to do is up here, input three volts, read. Then I want to send it to channel three. So add step. There's actually one other step I need to set the, the current uh, limit to one amp. But there is one more step here to turn it on is I actually have to turn on the output. One thing I've learned about power supplies is they always make sure that you're not gonna accidentally blow up your debt. So yes. everything is designed in a way that you don't accidentally turn on power. So right. makes a lot of sense. Let's go to output, state. So I wanna turn it on. So now we're ready to turn it on. So let me go ahead and turn on the output. There you go. It's very loud. Uh, you know, it's, it's, an alarm. Know, it's a fire alarm. It's That's alarm. important. If it was quiet, that would be a negative. Fair enough. So, so now yeah. we want to well, we want to know what's actually happening, how it's performing. So right. do we need to add a measurement somehow? Yeah, so let's add a measurement. So let me show you the search functionality. So this brings back all the, all the commands that have measure in them. So what I want to do is measure a scalar current DC. All right. Okay. So that's now add that three. So you add that step and right. you now let send me it. Just run this command and here you'll see the result. So right now, you know, it's in a very low current state um, and it's reading about, you know, 26 microamps. So pretty low. Yeah. Pretty low. Super low. I mean, the battery's got to last a while. So you'll see a readout here. You'll also see a readout on the front panel. Yes. Okay. This is what, yes. Both places, both places. So this was a very simple setup. Do you have a more complex sequence that might be interesting? Yeah, let me go ahead and open up another sequence here that I've created where it will actually sequence the outputs of the power supply. Basically, it'll turn on one channel at a time with a given duration between turn-ons. Um, you can set it up that way, yes. Okay. And that's useful because a lot of designs have a requirement for when power turns on. You can't just turn power onto everything at once. You have to kind of control it or else it'll load into like a, a failure error state. Exactly, exactly. You know what would be cool for this sequence is if we could hook up a scope to see the sequence turn on. Well, I don't know if you've looked behind you lately, <laughs> but we have a lot of scopes. We but actually, you. let's use one over here. Let's grab it. So our scope is hooked up to our power supply outputs, channel one to channel one, channel two to two, three to three. What is our test sequence doing? So first uh, I uh, send a reset command as well as a clear register command just to get a fresh start with the equipment. This is a good best practice. If you're coding test equipment and creating a test sequence, you wanna start from scratch. It's kinda of like hitting the default setup button on a scope. 
just do it every time before you start so there's no surprises. Absolutely, absolutely. And then I set send three commands to set the voltage output levels. I actually set input parameters. So here, if you look at the variable panel, um, output one is set to two volts, output two is set to three volts, and output four is set to four volts. So then I set up a sequence. So I set up output two to turn on 500 milliseconds after output one, then output three turns on one second after output one turns on. So we have a sequence of one, two, and three. Okay. Right. And then this command turns them all on. And Perfect. then I just set up a measurement command so you can see here you can output parameters. So this will output the output voltage of uh, output one. And you snuck a little weight in there too just to make sure we're not yeah. measuring a transient. Yes. Another good best practice. Yes, absolutely. So let's hit run. All right, you ready for this? We should see it change on both the scope and the front panel of the power supply. That's right. Okay. That's right. Here we go. Here we go. Let's play. So I assume that worked. I can't see the screens from here, but what does the computer say? It, it says two volts. So it, it's read, the readout here is correct. Uh, okay. So output one is turned on to two volts. Okay. We can't see. How's it look? Let's go analyze it. Yes. Okay. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. We have channel one, channel two, channel three to two, three, and four volts. Right. So you can see this is a great feature if you need to turn on multiple power rails in sequence. So sequencing, obviously super useful. Am I stuck in Command Expert or can I use it somewhere else in a bigger system? No, absolutely you can. So if you save a sequence, then you can import it into Keysight Benchview or into Keysight's test automation platform. Or you can export it into a number of different command processing languages, such as C Sharp, Visual Basic, MATLAB, or Python. So Python's more my speed. Can you show me Python? Sure, absolutely. So now you can see our Python script. So now you can edit this and import it into a larger script and create a much more advanced routine. So maybe I have a bigger system that is waiting for the power to turn on and then I'm sending a command to my device under test to tell it to do something. This script is auto-generated for me. Yep, absolutely. Good stuff. So once you have your script and you're running your tests, I heard you mention reporting earlier. Can you talk me through one way we might do that? Sure, so there's actually a Excel plugin for Command Expert, which you can see here. So with the plugin, you can actually set up inputs to the instrument within Excel, as well as pull measurement data. This is an efficiency test here. Here you can see where you can set up the input voltage within Excel, and then it actually captures, Excel is actually able to capture the measurement data as well, and pull that in. So you're running through different voltage current levels and pulling the output right back in and able to have that on a graph in Excel automatically. Yep. Absolutely. I had no idea it did that. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool, yeah. And we'll it's go into this cool. more detail later on. Okay. So it seems like we got the measurement stuff pretty well in hand here. Does Command Expert only work with the power supplies? I have to think it works with more tools than that. Yeah, absolutely. So it'll work with hundreds of Keysight instruments as well as non-Keysight instruments that accept Skippy commands. So now we've gone through the basics of how to develop a test program using Command Expert. Check out our other videos on how to rack mount the N6700C best practices for protecting your DUT, and also how to select the right modules for your application.